Good morning, this is uh, Mount Cooper. It's like 11.25. Um, this is 137 meters above sea level, the highest point in metropolitan Melbourne. It's quite interesting because it's not very high. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning feeling okay, I wanna get into good shape and I journaled a bit about it. Um, so, elbow, yep. First time I journaled, well, it was last night. First time in like three weeks, nearly three weeks or so. Uh, I don't know what I want to talk about today, but well, I do. I have a couple of things. Um, first, I guess, regarding getting into shape and shit. I don't want to just do it, where I've just put my finger in bird shit, nice. I don't want to do it too compulsively, so I don't want to just set myself super high expectations. Um, no, I didn't just put the bird shit in my hair, don't worry. Um, but I want to yeah, get into good shape, or decent shape. Um, I've got six weeks off. Yesterday I was like nulled, my emotions were like stunted. It was, I wanted to journal, uh, vlog, um, vlog about it. Uh, yeah, it was just bad. I woke up in the morning, went for a little jog. I cooked, I meditated, I read for like an hour and a half. I made progress on a couple of songs on guitar and when I sat down I just still felt I completely I felt flatlined I felt emotionally stunted it was it was strange it was not really not fun um, spoke to Nico for a bit about like my feelings and whatever about this um, didn't uh, I wasn't really self wallowing um, I was just like curious and he asked me like oh when was the um when was the happiest you felt over the last six months and i literally looked into the at the ceiling for like 20 minutes thinking about it i almost got emotional because i um i couldn't think of a time where i felt genuine contentment or happiness um just a sense of peace over the last six months i a couple of points like that evening when I got my flat, after like three days of landing in Australia, I um, <clears throat> I felt like good, felt fulfilled, felt like I'd achieved something, there was a bit of control. Um, another point was when I was coding, this the Kindle Quotes app, that felt good, and then finally when I was going bouldering semi-regularly, pretty regularly, a few times a week with a couple of good people. Um, and then, yeah, I think I was, I think it got me down last night because I was in a bad state of mind, so I was probably just seeing the negatives over the last six months. Um, well, yeah, I was, that's what was happening. Um, I was looking at it from a negative perspective. But nevertheless, I do think uh, that, I don't think I have had many high points at all over the last six months. Um, even when I got down to a pretty good weight, I was still yeah I still felt isolated and I don't know there were times when I'd go to bed I wouldn't have any sexual thoughts or anything I didn't have that for like a month or so maybe six weeks um, and I just went to bed peacefully but nevertheless like throughout the day a lot of my activities like my jogging my trying to eat like one meal a day a lot of it was compulsive and I wasn't actually wasn't really that fulfilling. It didn't feel, I don't know, it felt just okay. It wasn't like a sense of achievement. Um, I don't know, I'm not gonna reflect on that here. Um, but yeah, I guess one of the reasons I wanna get into good shape is so I'm more attractive to girls because I guess I'm coming to accept that I do want some sort of like intimate connection, um, relationship perhaps, I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna deny myself that anymore, I don't think. I, I don't know what I want, I just know that I've been isolated for so long and I do think it would be nice to have some companionship. Um, I also think, I've also thought recently about how uh, like we pedestalise stoical emotions and stoical mindsets or whatever, you know, like not being perturbed by any out, out external um, situations and external events and 
just being content with yourself and what you do each day and having your own purpose and mission and not having to rely on anything external I think that's a hell of an ideal and I used to just want that and think that that was I was wrong for not being able to achieve that um, or bad for not being able to attain that and bad for well, yeah I don't know well, I do know yeah bad for like feeling like I was somewhat reliant on externalities to bring me peace or whatever or contentment um, and I just think that's partly because of my own like, neuroses and my own whatever uh, inner conflicts um, but nevertheless I do think part of being human is to have connections and have some reliance on the external environment um, I do I do believe that now um, and I also believe I'm coming to be more okay with the idea of having a uh, more fluctuating emotion, emotional system, you know, having be more fluctuating emotionally, like, yeah, I don't know, um, I don't get excited over pretty much anything, um, and I don't really get sad very often, uh, I, don't think I, can, I don't think I can just change that at all. Uh, instantly overnight maybe it does require more vulnerability with other people uh, I do think I am quite vulnerable I do think I'm completely honest and open with myself and stuff like that um, so I don't know I don't know maybe it's just something I need to my subconscious will shift over time um, the more I try to get excited for things or idea. I don't know I don't know how to do it um, it's not like I just want to get hurt more, but I just, I don't know, I think a lot of life is um, feeling, and um, I think we like to, oh, there's a, there's a lark attacking a crow, um, or I think it's a lark, I don't know what it is, but there's a crow just chilling there, and there are three larks pestering it, one was just attacking it, um, and he was just sitting there like, yeah, fuck you, like a stoic, um, it's not really stoic if he's being a bitch, but... Anyway, uh, I guess I can reflect quickly on the job I lost, or is that suspended? Like, do I think it should have been suspended for six weeks? Um, I don't know, I was looking yesterday, uh, I was watching, I don't, I don't listen to the news or watch the news or look at the cases or anything like that. Uh, I, get, I can basically get my information through other people. Um, like I didn't know we were going to lockdown until someone put it in a group chat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if the government were a bit more scrupulous and a bit more attentive, considerate perhaps, um, then maybe I wouldn't have lost my job because, I mean, the nature of it is I, I'm working in open spaces and I don't really have, I don't have any contact with any of the public at all and I'm working, like, usually over two metres farther, two metres away from any of my workmates and... I'm pretty sure the, my workmates wouldn't have COVID. Um, I don't think that's the main issue because people in supermarkets are working next to each other and they're much closer to people, even though that is more essential. Um, but nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not... I don't really come closer than 20 metres. I don't really come within 20 metres of uh, anybody outside my place of work on any work day. Um, so it's not like... It's not like what I'm doing is an essential service, but it's just not necessary that I lose my job. I don't believe. Um, and I guess you could say that for so many different other jobs. And um, um, maybe, yeah, I, but yeah, I still think then other jobs shouldn't have been lost then. If they were fine social distancing and actually, you know, socially distancing and not just saying, oh yeah, we're, I mean, I am like not close to anyone when I'm working. Um, Apart from now and again my workmates, uh, and when I'm in the car, when I'm in the morning, in the evening, well, yeah, we could put stricter rules, but I don't think anyone in my work's gonna really have COVID. Uh, one person did at my place of work, you know, the whole council area, or the whole council institute, um, that was shit. Um, but nevertheless, I think if they went through with a fine tooth comb, that we shouldn't have lost our jobs. Uh, so I had them suspended anyway. 
Then you could say yes, but with the person who did have COVID like a few weeks ago, that proves it, then anyone in your workplace could have COVID. And I'd be like, yes, and I'd say that's a risk I'm willing to take. But then the government would say, well, we're not willing to take that risk, so it's better to safe than sorry. And I'd go, uh, I don't know if I'd concede or not. I'm not happy to, I'm not willing to mentally brainstorm that anymore. Um, what else? I had one more point. I'll think about it. Um, I don't think this was it, but I I still want to do that cycling thing. Um, you know, Nico was saying, well, every day, you know, you didn't have time to think about girls and your insecurities when you were cycling. And then I, re re I rebuked that with, like, a, the yes, I did. When I was cycling, sometimes it was just on a canal path, and I was, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm cycling for five, six hours, um, or however long a day, and I'm thinking. And when I get there in the evening, I've got, Sometimes there's nowhere to go out. Sometimes I, you know, I didn't go around campsites and just talking to people. I just did. I didn't do that. Um, so I had time to. I had a lot of time to think. Um, and yes, I did think about these things, but they didn't make me as insecure because yes, I was. I had a purpose each day, and I was uh, striving toward, you know, my my goals um, of getting to Athens, or whatever I was striving toward. Uh, I was just the next place um, en route. So yeah, I did, but yeah, I was in a better mindset because I was doing something every day, as I've just said. Um, so I don't think it is like escapism. Uh, and I do think I can be aware of my insecurities while I'm doing something which is super, you know, meaningful or meaningful to me. I don't think I have to be in a state where I am now, like where I'm just cooped up inside a lot of the time and in a very inconducive environment to growth or to what would be conducive to me anyway um, my growing my growth so anyway I still want to do that but given the nature of the world um, or the majority of it I uh, I don't think I'd be going across countries you know going through Europe and then hopefully into Asia which is my plan um, one minute <coughs> Bless me. Why don't, yeah, I, I tried to stop doing that so recently, saying bless me. It's such a Christian thing. It's quite interesting. Um, really unnecessary. Bless me. Oh, bless me. Please bless me, for I'm dying. I think it came from the Black Plague. You know, anyway. Um, Black Death. But yeah, I was thinking over the last couple of nights, because I saw a YouTube video where some guy was going up to Scotland, and I was like... Scotland. Well, there's a lot of it. there's a lot in England I can see, and I saw one of the guys who I used to live with in the hostel. He went on a cycling trip in England. And I was like, there's also a lot of England I can see. So potentially, when I get back home, if I do have a good amount of money saved up, I could buy my bike that I'd like to tra travel the world with, or however much of the world with, and I could just do it up through England into Scotland because Scotland, I believe, I've read, um, they allow you wild camping most places that aren't private that isn't private property uh, that aren't private properties um, so I could just cycle up to Scotland and it'll be cold but Scotland's fucking beautiful I've seen a bit of it in a road trip through the Highlands on a road trip through the Highlands but I there's so much shit much shit to more to see um, so it could be an idea doing a road trip doing a cycling cycle touring up through England into Scotland around down Edinburgh back into England that'd be fucking cool I think um, so yeah that's 40 minutes so I think I'll stop it there and we'll have a jog back and this is my yeah this is where I am um, yep yeah. <clears throat> cool plan for today get back shower um, read I'm reading the history of western philosophy which is very, yeah, actually very interesting there's a lot of criticism in it as well it's not just like this is this it's Bertrand Russell's critiques of a lot of these philosophers that I've read thus far anyway um, which I damn right damn right like reading damn right like reading uh, because it makes me like take them off the pedestal because they used to pedestal the Stoics <clears throat> I didn't really do it with Plato because I didn't really get I didn't really enjoy Plato um I've not read any Aristotle, but he's like, yeah, Aristotle, mate, you're full of shit because of this and this. And it helped me, it probably helped if I studied it more and actually took a load of notes and, like, 
went through the chapter and summarised them and but I don't know if I really want to I was thinking about that but if like, I set myself that high, such a high expectation I probably wouldn't I'd probably end up not reading them the books um, so at the moment I'm just happy just reading through it you know highlighting in the margins certain paragraphs about 15 minutes um, see I'm reading that and it's enjoyable so I'll do that and then I'll probably make play oh yeah then I'll have breakfast porridge while I'm doing that and I might play some guitar and I downloaded League of Legends yesterday that's one of the moments yesterday where I actually felt some emotions like first like ex not excitement but like a bit of like fuck yeah um, and then I felt a bit frustrated and I was like I came off it and I wasn't frustrated I was like yeah I felt something um, and I'm not judging myself because it was through a video game um, I'm not because yesterday I had a productive day and it was a day after and yeah that's probably why probably one of the reasons why I felt so shit yesterday I mean it was a day after I just lost my job I went to work that yesterday the day before yesterday thinking yeah I'll probably have it yeah because we you know I there was an email I received and my boss said yeah it's looking good for us yeah probably fine someone put it in chat saying this all we have to do is have social distancing and someone put like a work permit to show you going to work and I was like well that'd be a bit of a bitch but yeah I'll have my job and then by the end of that day like literally uh, 20, 10, 10, 20 minutes before the end of the day I was like oh yeah no no it's it's not happening you've six weeks off um, so yeah Yesterday I was probably just super dejected, but I wasn't aware of why. Uh, I did talk to Nico, and we were like, "That's probably why." Nico was like, "Yeah, that's probably the reason. Um, makes sense." But I just wasn't consciously aware of it because I probably think I'm just, I can just operate perfectly, um, and I'm not still not totally aware of things going off in my subconscious, uh, in my unconscious. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I do that, and then I mean that's that's quite a bit. I've been for a fucking seven and a half k jog slash walk, which is what this is. Out of out of my meditation and reading, I might look for some new things to cook. I might cook, um, and yeah, people, you know that's fucking good. Why can't I just say to myself, yeah, Luke, no, chill, bro. This is like COVID. Not many, you know, not a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff. And I could be like, well, you should be doing a lot of stuff. See, as a chance to thrive and that just leads me to self-destructing and not enjoying life so um, I've been there done that uh, maybe I can go there again and be a bit more healthy but you know in the way my attitude but for the time being I'm happy just doing some productive things and yada 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 try not to expect too much for myself oh also an important point actually on this job today um, this isn't the fourth time I've stopped, so to record this video is the fourth time because three other times getting to this point at the top of this peak, I guess you can call it. Um, I stopped and I stopped jogging and I walked. And always in the past, I've whenever I've gone for a jog, I've never like allowed myself to walk because I've gone like, okay, I can always. I, I did 5k quite slow, but I didn't stop jogging. And today I stopped. And the most enjoyable parts of this of this jog the parts when I stopped to walk because it was like I broke that self expectation that that rule I that are you know not arbitrary but that rule I applied to myself of thou shalt not thou shalt not walk you, know, you should not stop jogging um, and I did and I was like it felt quite liberating um, and that makes this more sustainable because if I'm every day and I haven't recorded this on Strava either which I'm quite happy about because I could easily record on Strava be cognizant of my likes and the you know the likes I get on the run and be super aware and focused on or not super aware but be focused to some extent on you know my minutes per kilometer and my total distance like today this whole jog's seven and a half k I believe and when I was coming up I was thinking like oh this is half what I used to be able to do without walking and like, as soon as I noticed I thought I was like man that shows just how fucking like what's going off up there unhealthy my mental state is or can be you know it's not like you know every day our mental state fluctuates but how unhealthy it thus can be um, and it is every day to some extent this unhealthy because that is me um, but yeah if I allow myself to stop and to go on shorter jogs and if I can actually allow myself to do this 
then this will be so much more sustainable and I'll be actually not doing it, doing it as compulsively and I won't feel as bad if I miss a day. If I just allow myself to, oh yeah, you can take a break now, you're pretty tired, or oh yeah, I've done a shorter one today, or let's try this new area, it's a shorter job, but it's somewhere new, um, then that'd be great. It's just that I don't often allow myself these things. Like when I did, had my bout of jogging early this year, I was like, I did, I did 6k today, tomorrow I'll try for 6 and a half. I did 6 and a half k but it was slow, let's try to increase the pace. And I felt good, I felt like the run is high and the, you know, the hormones kicking in, but it was, there was a lot of self-expectation and eventually it led me to just self-destructing. Anyway, I've just realised there's a water tower up here and I realised that it completely makes sense because it's the highest point in metropolitan Melbourne, um, save, the, save for the skyscrapers of course. And I can hear the bird song, and that's lovely. Uh, it's 21 minutes now, and I was like, "Oh shit, it's 14 minutes or whatever it was." And now this is a—that was only two thirds of the video, so I'm gonna stop now.